Awesome. All right, well, hey, we have been in this series called More Than a Hashtag. Who's been here the last couple weeks? Yeah, lots of you. Uh, last week we had small groups. The week before that we had service at our North Campus, service here simultaneously. And Jen, she brought the fire up north. I heard it was awesome. But if you have been here the last two weeks for this series, I need, I want to give some people some cash. Um, so if you've been paying attention, I have $5 here. If you, if you think you know what we talked about the last two weeks, raise your hand and wave at me. James Gwynn, come on, get up here, bro. Come on, <laughs> that was Sunday, that was awesome. Who, okay, Merrick, come on, get up here. I need one more volunteer that thinks they know, that thinks they know. My man Tavis, bring it up. Come on, let's go, Tavis, come on. We got our two middle schoolers. I'm a little biased because... These middle schoolers are awesome. All right. So how, have you ever had a pop, pop quiz at school? Uh, yes. Do you know what a pop quiz is? Yes. It's when you get questions that you weren't expecting. So here's the first question. Oh, hold on. I got to, I got to, nope, not anymore. <laughs> nope. All right. All right. I'm going to give $5 away to one of you. If So. First question, what was the title of week one's more than a hashtag series? On the count of three, two, one, go. Do something. One, zero. He's paying attention. Give it up for Merrick. That was impressive. All right. Second question, what was the title of week two's message? Video message. Remember, we were at small groups. Ben shared one, two, three. No. <laughs> Good guess. Love, mercy. And last question for all the marbles. I forget my last question. What's the theme verse for this series for all the marbles? No. Okay. Does anybody else want to guess? Yell at me. Micah 6 eight. All right. So between the two of you, there's three questions, and one of you got the answer right. And he's smart. Can we just give it up for Tavis? Oh, wait, 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 wait. I don't want, does that make sense? That Merrick knew his stuff. Tavis had no idea what was going on, but yet I gave $5 to Tavis. Hold on, Tavis, hold on, hold on, Tavis, Tavis. Thank you. It's a good idea. I'm illustrating something here. This whole series is about justice. What is right and what is wrong? And what just happened is wrong. Can I get a witness? It's wrong. So, Merrick, get back up here, bud. Get back up here. Tavis, stay here. I got I to gotta illustrate this before you run off with my money. This is, this, is, this is right. This is justice. He deserved that $5. And this is mercy. He didn't deserve the $5 but yet I gave him the $5. And that's what we're talking about. Give it up for my two volunteers. Go on. All right. All right. That was fun. I like giving away cash. It's, you know, it's something, something great about it. Um, okay. So we're in this series called More Than a Hashtag. And like I just said, it's all about justice, doing what is right. And, and you know, like Micah 6, 8 is our theme verse. And I, I'm going to throw it up on the screen um, and we're going to read it together because I think it's important that we take God's word and we actually plant it in our heart. It's not just something that we read and forget, but it's something that we read and retain. So on the count of three, we're going to read this together. It says, one, two, three, no, oh people, the Lord has told you what is good. 
And this is what he requires of you, to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Well done. That was very impressive. I almost got behind because you guys are so fast. Here's the reality. Here's the truth about our world. It doesn't take long for us to look around and to see on Twitter, to see on the news, to see on Instagram, to see with our own two eyes in our schools that there is a lot of injustice, right? There's bullying. That's injustice. We've bullied people, and we've been bullied by people. If you've walked this earth for longer than two seconds, you know that that's the reality. There's things like racism. And not just in America, this is global. This is around the whole world in different time zones, in different languages, in different cultures. Racism is injustice in our world. I've witnessed it with my own two eyes. I, I grew up a little bit in, in Moscow, Russia, and I had Korean and, <laughs> thanks, Ilya. <laughs> I had Korean and, and South African friends. And because of their skin color, they would get mugged on a regular basis by skinheads in Moscow, Russia. That's racism, that's injustice. And I think it's important for us to, to, to recognize injustices all around us, classism. People that have more money, oftentimes they have more favor, they have more, more ability, more opportunity in life. There's extortion, there's starvation. People, on the, not, not in America necessarily, but in other third world countries are right now as we sit here, starving to death because they cannot find food to eat. That's injustice. There's people that are, there's this thing called genocide. If you don't know what genocide is, there, it's basically the, uh, the annihilation of whole people groups because they're just associated with that people group. The Holocaust, the Holocaust you might have heard about it in history where the, the Jewish nation was almost wiped from this whole planet, that's injustice. There's terrorism. We hear about this all the time on the news. We see it. It doesn't take long for us to keep seeing terrorism happening in our world, and that's injustice. So we're not here to just talk and get warm fuzzies at church. We're here to, to do something about injustice in our world. The whole point of this series is to move us from being aware of injustice towards acting and doing something active in our world so that we can be a part of the solution. Why? Because that's who Jesus is. Jesus doesn't just know about a problem. He does something to fix the problem. Come on. That's who Jesus is. He's somebody who acts and, and, and did something for us, even when we didn't deserve it, even when we had nothing to give him in return, he went to the cross for you and I so that we could sit here tonight and hear the good news that Jesus loves us. And that's what justice is all about. This whole series is supposed to move us towards acting for justice. It's not just enough to share or to hashtag, to check in digitally. We have to do something about the injustice in our world. Oftentimes, you might have witnessed this. In our world, people are very opinionated. Come on. Everybody's got, uh, I heard the saying, opinions are like armpits. Everybody's got two of them and they both stink, <laughs> right? You might have witnessed this in your school or you've seen this on the news or you've, you might have seen this on the street corner. On one corner of the street, somebody stands and they, they, they build a, a box to stand on, and they yell at the top of their lungs, listen to me, listen up, everybody, I want everybody to listen to me, and they get their friends together, and they, they rally people, and they wave their flag, and they, they, they make noise about what's wrong in the world. They make it obvious about what they see as wrong in our world, and they're yelling at the top of their lungs, follow me, do, do what is right. And then on the other side of the street, you have somebody else who builds a box, and they stand on it, and they rally their friends, and they wave their flag. They yell at the top of their lungs. They're like, listen to me. This is injustice. This is wrong. Right? We see this with our own two eyes. And these people, these two people, they're yelling against each other about two different causes, about two different injustices because their perspectives are different. 
Their opinions are different, but yet they are convinced without a shadow of a doubt that they are right. You know this. We see this. Who's right? Who's wrong? And what are they doing about it? And this is our world. Our world is full of loud people, and I'm one of them. <laughs> you may be like, yeah, you yelling. <laughs> I'm passionate about this. And I hope that we can see through God's word that it's not about how loud you are tonight. It's not about who's the loudest. It's not. You don't win the argument by being the loudest. Is there haze coming up? Can we shut it off? It's killing me. I can't see you guys. It's not about who's the loudest in our world. It's about what is right, what is just. And those are the questions I want to ask you tonight. What is right? What is just? And wh where do we fit into that? And how do we know without a shadow of a doubt? And how do we lead people to know what is right and what is just? So if you have your Bibles, who's excited about tonight? Are you guys with me? Man, I'm excited to preach. If you have your Bible, you can open up to the book of 1 Kings chapter 3. If you don't have your Bible, we'll have it on the screens behind me. But if you would like a Bible, we give away Bibles here. We have a free Bible for you. You can put your name in it, and you can read it, and it'll change your life, I'm convinced, because it's changed my life. Um, or you could go to your app store on your smartphone or your tablet. You can download the Bible app, and it can alert you one time a day to, to read the Bible, to get that daily dose of encouragement, strength, um, correction sometimes. I encourage you to do that. So we're going to start by reading out of the book of 1 Kings chapter 3. And we're going to pick up in verse 7 through 11. And this is about a dude named Solomon. Everybody say Solomon. Solomon was, uh, he's just been recently appointed as king over the whole nation of Israel. And the whole nation of Israel was one of the most powerful nations in the whole known world at this point in time. And he's 20 years old. He's a young pup. And, and God comes to Solomon in a dream. And he says to Solomon, Solomon, I don't even know what God's voice sounds like, but Solomon, ask for anything and I'll give it to you. How many of you would like to hear from God that, that thing in the middle of your dream? You're like, come on, Jesus, hook me up. <laughs> A Lamborghini, right? Okay, yeah, you know the story. I love you guys, but. Um, so we pick up verse 7. It says, now, Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, but... I'm only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours. The Lord was pleased that Solomon asked him uh, asked for this. So God said to him, since you have asked for this and not for long life or wealth or a Lamborghini <laughs> for yourself, nor have asked for the, the death of your enemies, but you've asked for discerning in administering justice. It all starts here. And God, uh, and we're, we'll pick up here in a second, but God blesses Solomon, and he says, not only will I give you wisdom, not only will I give you wisdom in administering justice and helping you know between right and wrong, but I will also give you all those other things. And this is so encouraging to me because it's so easy to get caught up in our life. Like, man, I just want AirPods. Like, I was just having that conversation out in the lobby. Somebody had AirPods, and I'm like, mm, I like AirPods. I need me some AirPods. Anybody like that? You know, you just get so materialistic. That's me if I'm being real with you guys. But God encourages us through this passage to fix our eyes on things that, that are more valuable than, than physical things, spiritual characteristics. And, and that's what we're learning here is wisdom is more valuable than anything else. And God says, I am going to give you wisdom so that you can lead your nation. And tonight's message is called Walk Humbly. Walk Humbly. Humbly. So if you're taking notes, you can write that down. Walk humbly. And we see this 
illustrated in an example for us by Solomon. He's the king of the greatest nation in the world. He's 20 years old. I know a lot of 20-year-olds. I know myself when I was 20, and I was not humble. I was pretty arrogant. I thought I knew everything. And, and you might be here tonight, and you're like, 20, that's old. But in his eyes, he recognized, I'm, I'm a baby. He even says, like, I'm a, I'm a young child. I don't know how to lead these people. I don't even know, like, what's right and what's wrong sometimes. And David comes to God and says, God, I know my perspective is so limited. My opinions are not complete. But, God, I submit myself to you, and I say, God, I need your wisdom in discerning what is right and wrong. And, and, and what we need to recognize is that is you and I. We are in that position. God says, I have called you to lead your peers. I have called you to lead your family. I have called you to lead the church. And I want you to, 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 to ask me, what do you want from God? And when God comes to you and says, Ask anything in my name and I will give it to you. Our response has to be, God, don't give me just a great title. Don't give me just what I want in the physical, but give me something that will help me lead your people, help me to know right from wrong, help me to administer justice. And this has to be our prayer, that we would have perspective to know that we don't know everything. There's too many arrogant people in our world, and that's us. We think we know but yet God wants us to humble ourselves and go before him and ask for wisdom beyond our own perspective. If you fast forward in chapter 3 to verse 16, we can pick up and we can see an example of what Solomon's wisdom looks like. And I'm going to just read it straight through. It says, now two prostitutes came to the king. That's right, they had prostitutes back then, people. Humans are humans in need of a savior. Now, Two prostitutes came to the king and stood before him. One of them said, pardon me, my lord, this woman and I live in the same house. And I had a baby while she was there with me. The third day after my child was born, this woman also had a baby. We were alone. There was no one in the house but the two of us. And during the night, this woman's son died because she laid on him. So she got up in the middle of the night and took my son from my side while I, your servant, was asleep, and she put him by her breast and put her dead son by my breast. The next morning, I got up to nurse my son, and he was dead. But when I looked at him closely in the morning light, I saw that it wasn't the son I had born. The other woman said, no, the living one is my son. The dead one is yours. You see what's happening here? It was hearsay. Nobody else was there to verify what happened. Quite the predicament. But the first one insisted, no, the dead one is yours, the living one is mine. And so they argued before the king. I can just see it. No, oh, no, you didn't. That son is mine. The living one is mine. No, you know, hey, you know, I could just see it. There's drama in the palace before the king. I mean, like a cat fight is breaking out. Hmm, I can't. That was the best I got. The king said, this one says, my son is alive and your son is dead, while that one says, no, your son is dead and mine is alive. Then the king said, bring me a sword. Oh, it's about to get serious. So they brought a sword for the king, and then he gave an order, cut the living child in two and give half to one and half to the other. The woman whose son was alive was deeply moved out of love for her son, and she said to the king, please, my lord, give her the living baby. Don't kill him. But the other said, neither I nor she shall have him, so cut him in two. And then the king gave his ruling. Give the living baby to the first woman. Do not kill him. She is his mother. What wisdom. When all Israel heard the verdict the king had given, they held the king in awe because they saw that, and I want you to note this, he had wisdom from God to administer justice. It wasn't his own perspective of why he was wise. It was because God gave him wisdom. And I think it's so important that we recognize if we want to be wise, if we want to be efficient and effective leaders in our schools, in our households, in our friends, we have to recognize we need God's wisdom. We cannot do it on our own. It's, it comes from that dedication, that humility to, to put down our, our, our experiences, to put down our opinions and say, God, I lay this at your feet. Help me lead people to, closer to you. Not closer to my understanding, but closer to who you actually are. 
If we want to act justly, we need to pray like Solomon did. God, give your servant a discerning heart to lead people and to distinguish between right and wrong. God, help me know, help me discern. My question is this, who is your guide? Who's your guide? It's not me. You know why? Because I don't know everything. It's not your parents, not your guardians. You know why? You know, you already know why, because <laughs> they don't know everything. <laughs> Who is your guide? It's not your professor in college. It's not your teacher in high school. It's not your principal at your school because they don't know everything. Who's your guide? It's not the president of the United States because they might think they know everything, but they don't know everything. You can laugh at that. Who is your guide? We need a guide. We need somebody to lead us to truth, not to opinions, not to what we think is right, not to what they think is right, but we need a guide that actually knows what is right, what is just, what is the reason we are here. And, and, and who is helping us distinguish between right and wrong? Are we just going with the crowd? Are we going with the flow of what everybody says, the status quo? Or are we thinking for ourselves? Are we listening for ourselves? It's too easy to follow the crowd. Who is your guide? People love to promise you justice. Uh, I, man, politicians, politicians are good at this. They promise everything. But really... They're limited in their ability to deliver because they're just like you and I. They're limited in their perspective. They're limited in their understanding. But you know who is unlimited in their perspective, who is unlimited in their understanding, who is unlimited in their ability? And that's our God. And you know where I'm going with this. Who is your guide? We need a guide that is eternal, that understands all truth and will lead us to all truth. It's not just some warm, fuzzy feeling, not some warm, fuzzy message. It is, it is the message that changes everything when we humble ourselves before God and we say, you know what, God, I recognize I don't understand everything. I don't get it all. I can't explain it all. I, I don't have answers for everything of why things happen. But God, I trust in you to lead me to all truth. To discern what is right and what is wrong. John 16, 12 through 13. And I'm going to close with this. It says, I have much more to say to you. This is Jesus speaking to his disciples. I have much more to say to you. More than you can handle right now. But when he, the spirit of truth, the spirit of truth, come on, the spirit of truth. He will guide you into all truth. But he, the spirit of truth, when he comes, he will guide you into all truth. The Holy Spirit is here to live within us, to guide us where? To all truth. He's not on the biggest box on the street corner yelling at you, waving his flag, rallying his troops. He's a still small voice. That comes to you in your, in your deepest, direst moment when nothing makes sense. And he says, I know you by name. I created you with my own blueprint. I gave you every hair on your head. Even if you don't have much. You can laugh at that. That's who the Holy Spirit is. He's a guide that leads us into all truth. And my prayer is that we would get this that we would humble ourselves. My prayer is that you would recognize that I don't know everything, and I don't have to. I just have to listen for his voice. I just have to lean into his truth and walk and do something. I don't have to be the loudest. I don't have to be the rightest. I just have to listen to his voice, to submit myself to his ways and follow his spirit. With every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're here tonight and, and, and you're like, man, this is all new. I've never heard about this Jesus guy in this way. I just want to say welcome. 
to the kingdom of God. This is, this is who our God is, is he has truth for us. He has inspiration for us. He has encouragement for us. He has healing for us. And God has so much for you. Jesus does, has done so much for you, and he cares about you. Even though I don't know your name, Jesus knows your name. And you being here tonight, hearing this word, is not by chance, it's by design. And, and I wanna give you an opportunity tonight to accept Jesus Christ as your savior. We believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. He came and he walked this earth and he modeled for us what it means to be a Christ follower, a, a perfect uh, uh, a person to live and to, to please God. And even though you and I make mistakes often, Jesus went to the cross and sacrificed his blood so that we could, we could enter the presence of God. And when God sees us, he does not see our mistakes. He does not see our sin. He sees his son. He sees his daughter. And so if that's you tonight and you're like, man, I want to know this Jesus. I want to know why I was created. I want to know my Savior. If that's you tonight, I encourage you. I'm going to give you an opportunity to respond, but I encourage you, you need to respond to Jesus because it's the best decision that you'll ever make in your entire life. It will change everything for you. And a response to Jesus is simply confession of our sins that we say, man, I am messed up. I am in need of a Savior. And a commitment to live for Jesus and to be like Jesus from here on out. So if that's you tonight, on the count of three, I'm going to give you an opportunity to raise your hand and let me know who we're praying with. And we're going to pray all together as God's people. If that's you, you want to respond to Jesus. One, two, three. I see that hand. 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 I see those hands. Every single one of you. And what's more importantly is Jesus sees you. So every single one of us, I want you to pray with me. Repeat after me. Jesus Forgive me for my mistakes, for my sin. I need you to come into my life and be my guide. I need you, your Holy Spirit, living inside of me, leading me to all truth. I commit to live for you from here on out. And even though I might mess up, trip and fall, I'll remember to look up to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Come on, can we just celebrate what Jesus is doing? Yeah, God is so good.